Hi and welcome to another episode of Mr. Ford's Guide to the a Certification Exam, How to Be a Computer Technician. In this episode, we take a look at expansion buses. Hey and welcome back. I want to talk about expansion buses and again, we're building that foundation level of knowledge and so we will go into some of these in more depth as we progress through this course but we want to get like i said a good foundation of what we're talking about now we're not going to present all the expansion buses in this presentation simply because the a plus exam doesn't require us to know these and honestly some of these expansion buses that we're leaving out are so old that only old geezers like me remember them and actually have nightmares about them because they were horrible so if you run into a really 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 old expansion bus on a computer don't even work on it sometimes they're not even worth it so okay enough of me grumbling like an old man expansion cards are what allows the user you me everybody else who uses a computer to connect cool additional functions and improve functionality to their motherboard computer. What this means basically is we can plug things into the motherboard to give us new nifty things. When Mr. Ford got his first computer back in the day, I didn't even have a sound card. And so you had to install a sound card to get sound. In fact, I didn't even have a mouse attachment. I had to install a serial mouse to get a mouse to work. So expansion cards allow us to add functionality to the computer. So for example, video cards or um, audio, if you really want to kick butt audio, you can get really awesome networking cards besides the integrated networking cards that do really cool things for those of you who are you know, LAN gamers and party gamers and all that fun stuff. And the expansion cards connect to the motherboard via the expansion buses. So expansion cards connect via expansion buses. Keep in mind, when we talk about expansion buses, we are really looking at the bus system, how information goes back and forth, how it communicates through the motherboard to the CPU and not just an open slot on the computer. There's more to it than just a connector. And the six expansion buses we need to know about are your PCI, your AGP, your PCI Express, as well as the AMR and CNR. And some of these should be familiar because of previous videos. And if you hear um, a little voice in the background, it's because my son is playing Xbox and apparently doing really good. So <laughs> anyhow, so the first one I wanna take a look at are the PCI. And again, you should remember these from previous videos. The PCI stands per for Peripheral Computer Interconnect, or as we call it, PCI, and was created by Intel back in 1992. And it usually showed up as a 32-bit slot, white in color or whitish in color. Now, there was a 64-bit slot, but you normally encountered this on a server, and servers are computers designed for um, networking applications, networking, uh, sharing, things like that. Basically, really expensive computers that would be in offices to manage networking, okay? And you could have anywhere between four to six PCI slots on a motherboard. It was definitely a major step in the evolution of the motherboard. It was a big jump from the older expansion busters. It was much faster and much more flexible. It connected exclusively to the South Bridge. Ding! See previous video for explanation of North Bridge and South Bridge and hub controllers. So other altern alternatives had to be developed for high-speed devices like video cards. So PCI Express connected to the South Bridge. South Bridge, again, was for slower communicating devices. Video, and we're tying stuff together here, video needs high-speed, high-demanding, Prima Donna needed some other way to communicate, and we'll look at the solution to that in just a second. So the PCI bus is not just used for expansion cards. It was a new way of thinking. It really was integrated into the motherboard. It was a new way of communication for expansion cards and sending information throughout the motherboard. PCI devices, well, the reason why we love PCI devices was because they were self-configuring. They were plug and play. And the old days, sometimes you had to go in and, and configure via software, or even worse, you had to configure by switching jumpers on the motherboard. 
So you kids today, man, you don't know how easy you got it. <laughs> and there were variations of the PCI. We had, for example, PCI X, which was designed for servers. You had mini PCI, which were used in laptops. And PCI, for the most part, is being replaced by the more modern PCI Express. That's what that little PCI little E means. So PCI Express technology is um, rapidly replacing PCI technology. So as we said a second ago, PCI was a little slow for video. And so we came up with an alternative to the PCI, and that was the AGP, and AGP standard for Accelerated Graphics Port, or you might have heard it called Advanced Graphics Port. And it was created for video cards because of the PCI limitations. It was a specialized type of PCI card, and it dealt exclusively with video. It had a direct connection to the Northbridge. Remember from the previous video, Northbridge is the high speed, the express lane. Motherboards were only allowed one AGP connector. So we didn't have two video cards working in sync with each other. It was one video card. That's all you got. And we were happy. And there were several types of AGP specifications. And again, AGP is being phased out in favor of PCI Express. Unfortunately for you, as a person who's going to take the certification exam, you need to know the different specifications. Sorry, just memorize them, be ready for the exam. You had AGP-1, which was back in 1996. You had a bus speed of 66 megahertz with a 32 bits, throughput of 266 megabits per second. You had the AGP-2. And you know what? Instead of me reading this to you and being bored, if you would like to pause the video and take a look at these numbers, you're more than welcome to. Okay, so I assume that you either <laughs> kept going or you paused it and you looked at it. So now we have the PCI Express. This is the newer technology, and we can call it PCI Express, or you might see it written as PCI-E or PCI little e. They all mean the same thing. It is the third generation of the PCI bus. It changed things because it's a serial data communicator. We describe the speed in lanes. Again, if you remember from the previous video, we talked about PCI Express 16, PCI Express um, 1. These are lanes communication speeds. So the PCI Express 16 has replaced the AGP 8X for video cards. So PCI Express 16 is pretty much the standard now for video cards. And they've got some pretty cool features. So for example, PCI Express is backwards compatible with PCI. This is important because nobody is going to jump on new technology instantly. New technology typically gets phased in. Just like PCI slots back in the day were phased in with older technology, PCI Express is being phased in with the PCI world. So it's backwards compatible. It can be on the same motherboard as a PCI slot, as PCI bus. You can connect, this is really cool, this is really, really cool. You can connect the PCI Express via copper, optical, or future media, meaning we don't know what it is yet, but when we discover it, you can use it for PCI Express. Kind of neat. It can transfer more data using fewer pins, which means you can communicate faster with a less, um, less width. So you don't have to have a big, long connector to send the same information. We have now less pins, which means we can shrink our cards down and send more information in a faster manner. First IO bus to send data serially, serially instead of parallel. So this was serial, which is totally different than again, the older type of bus connections. It's better with video than PCI or AGP. And here's something else that's pretty cool. Hot swappable. You can hot plug, hot swap components. What we mean by this is you don't need to turn the computer off. In the old days, you had a turn off the computer or turn off and unplug the computer. Nowadays, you can just plug it in, unplug it, plug it in, unplug it while the computer is running. Now, the old person, the old tech in me, I'm still turning it off personally, but hot swappable means you can plug it in, unplug it without having to worry about it. And the power management features make it much more energy efficient, which is good because we're using more and more energy as we get more and more advanced technology. And what we mean by energy efficient is, is if we had to use the old way to do it, it would just take too much energy. 
So we're becoming more energy efficient because we have to, because we actually require more and more energy to run devices. Uh, confused? Don't worry about it. Anyhow, the last one we're going to take a look at is your AMR and CMR. And the AMR stands for Audio Modem Riser and Communication and Networking Riser. It's a special connector found on some motherboards. And for some reason, you need to know about it. And it's being phased out. You're not going to see this in your more current motherboards. All right, our next video, we're going to take a look at form factors. You definitely need to know these for your exam.